Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I set up my dual PC setup. I'll be covering everything from graphics, to my audio, to my peripherals. Before I begin, I wanna cover some basics. My top PC is my gaming PC, and my bottom PC is my streaming PC. I just wanted to get that out there, because I'm gonna be referring to those throughout the video, and I don't want it to be confusing. So, people's reasoning of having two PCs set up has changed over time. I've had this for almost four or five years now, and back then one PC couldn't do both. But now I feel like you could get away with running one PC, but once I go over what I'm trying to accomplish, I think you'd agree a two PC setup would be best for me. I'm running a Omen Transcend 32. That is a 240 Hertz 4K monitor. And again, that's plugged into my gaming PC. And I want to try to max out that gaming PC's performance to try to max out my monitor, which is pretty difficult at 4K on 240 Hertz. So I have a two PC setup. So the only thing that my gaming PC has to worry about is gaming and trying to maximize that performance. Every other task is taken care of by my streaming PC and I will cover that more later on. As I mentioned before, we're gonna be talking about three different topics today. One, how I get my graphics from my gaming PC to my streaming PC. Two, how I set my audio up between my two PCs and how I mesh the audio and share the mic between two PCs. It's truly amazing how those devices do it and we'll cover that in a little bit. And lastly, we're gonna be talking about peripherals which again, everyone's situation is different, but I'll show you how I do it. Let's start with the graphics. My graphics card in my gaming PC is plugged into two different locations. One being my main monitor, which is my Omen Transcend 32, and the capture card in my streaming PC. My capture card I'm running is a 4K capture from Elgato and is mounted directly in my PC. The setup for this is a little strange, but my gaming PC sees this as a second monitor. So when I go into NVIDIA control panel, I actually set this up as two separate monitors that are mirroring one another. The key is to make sure my Omen Transcend 32 is the main display and that the Elgato capture card is mirroring that display. If you don't do it the other way, it could get a little weird with, again, maximizing your resolution and your hertz. So if it doesn't work, just swap the mirroring and you should be good. Once I set that up, it was really simple for me to add the source in OBS as a capture device and your graphics are ready to go and stream. But if you went live right then and there, you still wouldn't have audio. And audio is not the easiest thing to do with the dual PC setup. But with the help of Beacon and their two devices that I use in my setup, it's actually pretty simple and I'll talk about that right now. The first device I want to tell you guys about is the Beacon Studio. This thing has four ports on the back, two USB type C's labeled PC number one and PC number two, a headphone jack and an XLR input. For my dual PC setup, this thing solves all of my issues. With those two USB type C's, I plug each of my PCs into one of those ports. PC number one is my streaming PC, which also is powering the device. And PC number two is my gaming computer. What makes it so cool is that once you do that, all of the audio from PC number two runs a app called Beacon Link. That just lives in the tray of that device. There is no UI to it. All it does is track all of the audio that's going on on that gaming PC and pushes it to the Beacon Studio. Once it's on the Beacon Studio, that gets relayed and pushed to the streaming PC, which is the main PC that's running the Beacon app. Once you get all of the audio to the Beacon app, that's where you can rearrange, you can add your audio to different channels, and you can control all of the audio individually via your streaming PC even your gaming applications via your streaming PC. I know that might be a lot to understand at first, but let me show you. If I open the application on my gaming PC, which is again, PC number two, it will prompt me on PC number one, my streaming PC, via the Beacon app. So if I'm opening up Chrome or if I'm opening up a game, it will actually populate and show the name of that and that you can drag and drop those to individual channels called link channels and you can control them via your streaming PC. It's pretty crazy, it's pretty nuts, but it's just so innovative. I have the ability of sending four channels of audio in both directions. I don't need to do that because I only had to utilize one of them in each direction, but the option was there if I needed it. Now that I have all of my audio from my gaming PC to my streaming PC and is available that I can now organize it and choose what my audience was supposed to hear and also what my VODs were supposed to show, it was really easy to do so via the routing table. So you can choose very easily after organizing all of your columns, your routing table, because it is dynamic. So as you add columns to your channel that you can again control independently, those channels then get added to the routing table and you can add and subtract them to your VOD track or your audience mix. In most cases, people want to remove their music that they're playing on their live streams in their VOD. So you can easily do that here by unchecking the music tab in the Beacon app on the routing table. The Beacon Studio is an XLR interface. So plugging my XLR microphone from HyperX 
was pretty simple. All I did was plug it in and set up the EQ and get my voice sounding exactly how I want it. Once I get it set up, I can very easily send that from my streaming PC to my gaming PC to be able to be utilized on there for in-game microphone or anything like that. So there's no need for two microphones anymore, which is pretty genius. So just to recap, I'm using my Link 1 channel out of the four channels I can send both directions from my streaming PC to my gaming PC is my microphone. From my gaming PC to my streaming PC is all of my game audio. So those are the one channels that I'm utilizing in both directions and they're both low latency channels. Now that I mentioned how I use the two USB type C ports as well as the XLR input on the back of the studio, now we're talking about the headphone jack. I plug my headphones into it, it's pretty simple. But what's cool about it is that I get real time monitoring of my voice through that headphone jack. So I hear what my EQ changes and it's not raw audio because all of that EQ is done on the Beacon Studio. I can hear that real time in my ears and it is so seamless and I love it. Not everyone likes hearing themselves in their ears. Some people hate it, but if I'm talking in real life to you right now, I hear myself, I wanna hear myself in game as well. So that's why I have it turned on. My Beacon Studio is placed above my computers, but it's not normally meant to be there. I wanted to be able to utilize the USB type C's and the two PC setup, and I didn't wanna to have to add extensions to it to have it live under my center monitor. So what I chose to do was utilize the space I had on top of my PC and plug it in that way. It made wire management super simple, and I didn't really have to utilize that big button on top of the studio, which can mute your mic and do other actions, because I have another device from Beacon called the Beacon Mix Create. That is at my fingertips. Anytime I stream, it has a beautiful display with a bunch of knobs that I can channel back and forth and control all of those different channels I set up earlier with a turn of a knob. It's so seamless, I love it. It's probably the best setup I've ever used. I've used the GoXLR a lot, I've used Rode a lot, but this one, again, just fits my setup so perfectly, and again, it's so seamless. And now it was time for me to add that audio into OBS. All I had to do was add two different sources, one of my audience mix and one for my VOD track. Once you set up your Twitch VOD track, it's very simple. You go to Advanced Properties and choose the channel that you want to be your VOD track. I chose my VOD track to be channel number two and my audience mix to be channel number one just to keep things simple. This simplifies your OBS tremendously when it comes to audio. You're only ever going to see two audio tracks. If you're ever going to add a USB microphone for your partner like I do for Ali's Mod Station, you add that to the Beacon app and then that audio gets carried over via the audience mix and the VOD track. So again, you add everything to the Beacon app and it carries over those two channels so you don't have to have any of these crazy amounts of audio inputs when it comes to OBS. Now that I have my graphics situated from my gaming PC to my streaming PC, and also my audio from my gaming PC to my streaming PC, and my microphone from my streaming PC to my gaming PC, it's now time to make the decision of how I'm gonna go throughout my peripherals. Sorry for my son, he's excited about this topic as well. I decided to go with one keyboard and two mice. The way I set up my keyboard was through a KVM or a USB switch that I have mounted underneath my desk. The way that works is one USB cable comes from each of the computers into the side of that USB switch, and then my keyboard gets plugged into the other side, and by clicking that button, it switches between the USB input that I choose to go to, which is both my PCs. Yes, there's some sure there's some latency there. I know there's gonna be questions about that. I'm not trying to be a pro gamer anytime soon, so it works great for me. I went with two mice for one reason, one reason only. I wanted to still have access to my streaming PC, which is all my exterior monitors, and do actions that I might need to do during stream and during gameplay. Instead of having to tab out using all of the, you know, amazing software that there is nowadays that allows you to use these dual PC setups and use one keyboard and mouse, you still have to tab out of your game and do those tasks. So I wanted to still have access to that streaming PC and be able to utilize it via my one mouse for that computer. So I have a USB cable running from both computers and to the dongle and it's just chilling behind the desk, ready to go. So that's how I decided to go with the keyboard and mouse. I think it's pretty simple. Yes, I know there's so many other solutions out there. I've just been using that way for so long now. I'm so used to it. I'm willing to give the other stuff a try, but this is just working for me right now. So I'm a happy camper. I know there was a lot of information set your direction. So if you guys have any questions about anything that went on in this video, please leave it in the comments below. If I even missed something or I missed a topic that you guys wanna know about, again, leave a comment. I would love to get to all of your comments and answer everybody. Thank you guys for watching this far. If you guys were here and you liked the video, please leave it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. We're really trying to push a long form and try to help out as many people as possible with our videos. 
We've posted a lot of videos already of our, you know, golf sim and this full setup tour. So if again, if you guys haven't seen those videos, go check those out now. We worked really hard on them and we're gonna to continue to work hard and keep pushing long form content for you guys. So thank you guys so much if you guys are still here and I'll see you in the next one.